Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. After getting a poster earlier this year and a teaser a couple of months ago, Fortiche Productions has come out of the sewers, otherwise known as La France, and finally given us a full Arcane Season 2 trailer, with some little treats along the way. And the internet did what the internet did best and absolutely lost their mind. Now, I would be lying if I said that I wasn't immediately hyped as well upon seeing the trailer. Because as soon as I saw Pit Fighter Vi, I fell to my knees in the Dollar General. We used to pray for times like this. I'm so excited for Arcane Season 2 that I've already made plenty of PFPs for Twitter. Am I obsessed? Yes. Is it unhealthy? Maybe. Do I care? No. Anyway, since it's been three years since we've gotten any Arcane content, I've been doing a lot of thinking about what storylines and character arcs Season 2 can offer, and most importantly, what needs to happen in order to stick the landing with what Season 1 set up in its finale. So before I start yapping about everything that I think is gonna happen, I'll just give you a spoiler warning, I guess, because I could be right. But if you're gonna leave before you go, consider subscribing. That's all I ask. Anyway, let's begin, shall we? I feel like the most obvious thing to lay out off the bat is what happened immediately after season one with the cliffhanger. I think we can all agree that Haskell, Salo, Shula, and Bulbuk are all kicking the can, right? They don't have a lot of depth as characters, and they really were set up at the beginning to be cannon fodder for this event. So it's pretty safe to say that they are all dying. The other one that I think is guaranteed is Cassandra Kierman. I think she's obviously going to die in service of Caitlyn's arc going forward in the story. It's obvious in the lines of dialogue in the trailers that Caitlyn is going to be chasing after Jinx this season, and the best way to do that is to emotionally motivate her by killing her mom. This is also pretty much outright confirmed in the documentary series about the show Bridging the Rift, and during an interview with one of the artists, we see this shot on one of the monitors. And, um... Yeah, this house that was once a pillar of comfort and family is now destroyed by a relative of someone she loves. This is going to affect Caitlyn and Vi's relationship as well, and I think that their relationship is probably going to be even worse in this season. Caitlyn already wanted to kill Jinx in the finale of season one, so God knows what she wants to do to her now. The other reason why Cassandra needs to die is because this shot would no longer have really any meaning. This is a daughter crying out for help as she hopelessly watches a missile headed straight for her mother. And if season two just starts off with Cassandra saying, nah, I'm good, then I'm definitely gonna have some problems. Speaking of problems, Mel. Mel 100% needs to die in this season of Arcane. This is my biggest concern when it comes to the cliffhanger of the last season. Because I just have this small feeling that the writers are just going to keep her around because she's a neat character and a lot of people like her. Also, it doesn't help with a bunch of fan theories going around about how the golden tattoos that she has mean something and that they're apparently armor for her. Yes, there are some people out there saying that the golden embossed tattoos that she has are actually a sign that she's had armor this entire time. Uh, no? The golden tattoos are a status symbol. The whole idea behind them are that they are supposed to emphasize the fact that she is the richest person in Piltover. We're not just gonna make up that this is some plot armor, are we? We're not doing that, right? Also, I feel like this is stupid to point out, but you know, the golden tattoos that are supposed to be armor, she doesn't have the golden tattoos on her head? I'm not a doctor or anything, but I'm pretty sure the head is probably one of the most important things to protect. If a giant explosion is going to explode and hit you in all of your body, your head is probably going to be deep fried. And again, I'm not a doctor, but I don't think getting deep fried by a missile is good for you. Also, if Mel dies, there's so much you can do with the other characters around her, like Jace and especially Ambessa. But let's put a pin on that for now because I wanna talk about Ambessa later. I think the only two characters that will and should survive in the explosion are are Jace and Victor. I think Victor is going to end up saving himself and Jace with the hex core from last season that he's been corrupting. And I don't think Jace is gonna be particularly happy if he finds out what this hex core has become. And I think Jace might catch on the fact that Sky isn't here anymore. He might wanna ask about the assistant that they had. Where did she go? And in terms of character for them moving forward, I think the science bros are gonna break up. Especially after Jace gets more and more power hungry after the attack and the death of Mel will be a prime motive motivator for this, and Victor will not be happy about that. Also, because of the Hex core corrupting him, Victor will become more of the glorious evolution that we know in the game. Jace will want to push for the development of weapons more and more, and Victor will definitely have an issue with that, and we know Jace will be making more weapons because of several shots in both the teaser and the full trailer. Vi has new gauntlets, Kate has a new and improved gun, and she also has a rail gun! Vi and Caitlyn also wear different armor as well, and we also have three new characters that will definitely have their own unique weapons. 
I mean, look at this chick. She has a blunderbuss. And with all these new weapons being created, Victor is probably going to leave Jace and Piltover as a whole and go back to Zahn to continue his research, which would evolve Zahn as a powerhouse in the arms race. All right, let's take a pin out of that world building aspect that I talked about earlier, and let's talk about Ambessa. Ambessa is going to be by far the most interesting character going into season two. We didn't get a lot of her in season one just because she came in at the tail end and kind of was a soft introduction to the character. And now that we're getting a whole season with her, there's so much more potential for her character. She is angry and she is out for blood. And by the looks of the trailer, she's going to be fighting everyone. There's a clip of some Noxians staring down some enforcers, which is insane to me. The writers were not lying when they gave the word war as the one word explanation for season two. Also, the character arc that Ambesta is going to go on throughout this season will be interesting. Watching her manipulate Jace like she did in season one and Jace possibly pushing against her and creating the war that we see in the trailer. My guess is that Ambessa is going to ask for the technology and the schematics that Jace made to make the weapons that Caitlyn and Vi are using and is just going to outright ask Jace for Hextech. And she's going to sugarcoat the conversation by saying that she wants to keep Piltover safe, but in the end game, all she wants is more power to spread her empire. Overall, I think she's going to be not only a great character this season, but also a great excuse to pivot to an entirely different nation in the world of Runeterra. And I pray that they don't squander her potential. Because the more depth that this world has, the better. Next, I want to talk about my favorite character, Vi. I love Vi. I think Vi is the best written character in the show. I know that sounds crazy since both Jinx and Silco exist, but I don't care. I stand by my statement, and I will not elaborate. I want to see my comment section burn. Anyway, what I'm expecting from Vi in Arcane Season 2 is lots and lots of depression. First, we have the Vi music video that released that made me rewrite this entire section, because there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on in this trailer. Number one is that we see hallucinations of Kate as Vi is lost in her own mind. This is a bit worrying for me, but for other reasons that I'll talk about in a bit. Right now, though, I think that it makes sense for this character, and overall, I think it's interesting stuff. Second is that we can see Jinx in the background of some shots and even betting on Vi, and at first I thought this was a hallucination, but I don't think it is considering that Jinx is looking at Vi when she's blackout drunk. We also see that Jinx is betting on Vi to win the pit fights, which is even more interesting. I've seen people say, oh wow, look, Jinx is proud of her sister here, when I don't believe that's what's going at at all. Jinx is 100% preying on her sister's down fall here. She wants her to hurt, and most importantly, she wants her to become the worst version of herself, which seems to be going great. Now, the biggest thing that made me rewrite this is this guy. If you remember, we saw him in both the trailer and the teaser. He's the big guy with the big shield in the Piltover's finest shot, and he seems to be just one of the enforcers. And there's two options here. A, he was sent by Caitlyn to watch over Vi in the Undercity. I think this is something that Kate would do just to keep track of Vi to make sure that she's safe, and overall, he's pretty much there to kind of babysit her and make sure she doesn't do anything crazy. Or B, he also left Piltover with Vi because of some falling out. Or he could just be visiting, which is, I guess, an option here. Another thing that's been questioned by a lot of people is his relationship to Vi, considering it seemed like he was going to be somewhat of a background character from what we've seen previously. But this music video suggests that they have a close relationship that's going to be fostered throughout season two. And a lot of people have pointed out that he kind of looks like Vander, which I believe is intentional since there's been an instance like this before, with people pointing out that Caitlyn looks quite similar to Vi's mother. And the writers have said that this is an intentional decision on their end for the sake of her character. So this habit that she has will be explored in further detail as the next season goes on. This habit will be great to contrast with Warwick and how Vi is going to handle her childhood father and hero being turned into a monster, perverted by corrupted magic against his will, only being used as a corpse to enact his maker's agenda. Deep stuff here and I can't wait to eat it up. So let's talk about the overall arc that's going to go on with Vi. Let's start with Act 1. Right after the obliteration of the council, I think Caitlyn is going to create some group of Piltover's finest enforcers, including Vi, to immediately go into the Undercity and do exactly what she says in the trailer. Somewhere along the line, Vi will run into Echo, and he will not be happy seeing her brutally imposing the Enforcer's will upon the people of Zaun, and also he won't be happy seeing her in Enforcer garb. They'll probably have an altercation where Echo tells her that she's betrayed everyone she's ever cared about. This will obviously mess Vi up on a mental and moral level, considering that she's become the exact thing she hates in order to bring her sister to justice. Then during Kate and Vi's altercation with Jinx, something will go wrong. I think Vibe might have some change of heart and try to save her sister from Caitlyn. 
Caitlyn definitely won't be happy with this, and at the end of Act 1, they will have a falling out, and Vi will go back to the Undercity with nothing left to live for. And in Act 2, we will see her become the pit fighter that we see in the music video, and this is where I might have a problem with her arc. You see, in League of Legends, Vi has amnesia. Her amnesia is so bad that she barely remembers most of her childhood in Zaun. In some version of the lore, she remembers nothing at all. And this is my big problem. I hate amnesia as a writing trope. It falls under the same category as it was all a dream along with time travel, love triangles, and time skips. All of that, no go. And yes, Arcane has been able to pull off a time skip well, I just don't know if they can do the same thing with Vi's amnesia. Because if you don't get it at least 99% perfect, you run the dangerous risk of just erasing all of Season 1's masterful character development, and just reducing her to the state of, I for gore, lol. And if this happens, I will unleash the seven plagues of Egypt upon the entire human race. But other than that, I think Vi is set up to do pretty good this season. Either in the middle or end of Act 2, Warwick will wake up, and this will be Vi's call to go back to Piltover and warn Caitlyn of the dangers growing in the Undercity. And Act 3 is obviously going to be the war between Piltover versus Ambessa and Noxus, and yeah, looking forward to it. Arcane, don't mess up my favorite character or I will do unspeakable things. Moving on, Echo is also an interesting character going into this season, as we don't get a lot of him in Season 1. Not to say that he's a bad character or anything like that. If anything, I'd say the opposite, since what little he gets in screen time, he makes up for with how much they feel it with in terms of characterization. Echo is a very presently minded character. He is all about the here and now. Who can I help now in this instance? Which is pretty ironic considering his whole thing in the game is time travel, but I think this is very purposeful with his character since the climax of his arc in season one was an indulgence in the past between two childhood friends who now have to face who they have become. And in doing this, it made it harder and harder for Echo to keep fighting Jinx because all he could see was powder. So in season two, I definitely think we're going to have some sort of confrontation between Jinx and Echo. Honestly, they might be cool with each other, considering that it looks like they're talking to each other in this frame. It could be one of the Jinx sympathizers in the show, but right now I'll stick to the Jinx theory. Honestly, I think Echo could be on the chopping block for characters that are gonna get killed. With how beat up he looks in the trailer, and the fact that he's between two sides in this war, I think it's not gonna end great for him. He didn't like Silco during his reign, and he didn't like the Enforcers. So he was battling a war on two fronts, and that usually doesn't end well for those types. And honestly, I think it's pretty safe to say that he's gonna get caught in the crossfire. All right, let's talk about the giant airship of an elephant in the room and talk about Jinx. What absolute tomfoolery is Jinx gonna be up to in this season of Arcane? And honestly, I have no idea. She's a complete wild card this season for me, and I wouldn't have guessed that she would become a symbol of Zahn like Vander was. Her mental state is probably gonna get worse and worse going forward, obviously, as Silco is going to be another voice in her head going forward. If you thought Silco was dead, then you are wrong, because he will be alive and well in Jinx's psyche. I also wonder how she's gonna handle this whole idea of her becoming a symbol, because she definitely isn't fit to be a leader in the state that we see here at the end of season one. It seems like Savika will be pushing her in that direction, from the trailer, which is a bit bizarre to me considering that Savika hated her last season. But with Silco gone and the threat of war growing, Savika really doesn't have any other option. And as this hatred for society festers inside her, Jinx decides to let it all burn. And this leads her down the only path that I can see her going on this season, and that is of one of death. Yes, not only am I saying that Jinx is gonna die this season, I also think that this is the only end for her character that I can see being satisfying. She's not gonna be put in prison because honestly, she's too dangerous to be kept alive. And also because death really seems to be the only end that she wants. When Echo pins her down to the ground on the bridge and she has lost, rather than deciding to accept that she has become a monster and she's done terrible things, she instead tries to kill herself because she simply cannot handle that reality. Also, it kind of feels like cheating, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I think it's a good piece of art. Uh, big spoiler warning right now. There's this piece of concept art for the show of Vi holding the dead body of Jinx. And call me a sadist, but I think this is the perfect way to end this show with these two sisters. The ruins of a once great city surround an ash and blood covered Vi while she weeps over the body of the last relative she swore to protect. No one wins in war, Vi. God, this show is gonna ruin my life again, isn't it? Anyway, I wanna talk about a couple other ideas that I have for the season with the trailer and other things coming out about the show. 
show. So I would just fit them all into this speed run thoughts segment. So uh, let's go. First, we have this black nightmarish figure. I have no idea what this is. It could be Victor, maybe him on his path of glorious evolution. Some people say that it's Silco, but I just don't think that because of the fact that both eyes are normal. I feel like if Jinx had this nightmare version of Silco, I feel like the eye would be very prominent since that is so much of his brand. It also seems like there's these thorny vines wrapping him, and that just doesn't vibe with the character of Silco. He's not a thorny person. He doesn't scream vines and thorns to me. He more screams Eye of Cthulhu to me, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong here. Honestly, I think this could just be an entirely new character, and I think it has something to do with this line in the trailer. The arcane is waking up. I think that with Jace and Victor tapping into the Hex Core from the last season, and with whatever they're doing this season, they could be opening gateways for these magical beings from the Void to cross into Runeterra. And I don't know, I think I'd rather have this be a new character. I want to see new characters in the show to expand the world building. Also, to add another nail in the coffin of the Silco theory, the background behind this figure looks a lot like the wall in the throne room during Mel's flashback, which would make this new entity a possible Noxus character. Jinx has a metal middle finger. I think maybe Caitlyn shoots it off with her precision and for some reason doesn't decide to kill her. Probably by the request of Vi because Vi wants to beat her up herself, maybe? I don't know. Uh, possibilities are endless here. Jinx on an airship, which is an obvious callback to episode one of the show, and I think it's probably going to be in the final act of this season. I think we're just going to have this three-way war where we have Noxus versus everyone, we have the Enforcers versus everyone, and then Jinx versus everyone. It's going to be crazy. What's going to happen? I don't know. Anyway, that's really all I have to say about the trailer. If you're here for the first time, consider subscribing. I'm going to be talking about Arcane extensively, so if you want more of that, you'll be getting that. I don't know. Also, follow me on Twitter. This is where I'm going to be doing most of my Arcane posting, probably. And also, subscribe. Did I say that yet? I don't know. Put your thoughts about the trailer down in the comments below. I want to look at more theories. I read them. Will I respond? Maybe. I don't know. But I'll definitely read your comments. Don't worry. We just hit 4,000 subscribers on the channel, which I think is pretty cool. If you want to support the channel more, consider becoming a member. It's only two bucks a month and you get some cool wacky emotes and you get this cool little poker chip as a little badge next to your name whenever you comment in either my live streams or in the comments section. All right, that's all for me. Goodbye.